Welcome back and let's get into our news review segment now. The Daily Graphic reports that as this government reduced interest rates, President tells IFC, and you don't need tin to file cases, Supreme Court rules, uh, industry players express concern over tax increases. The Ghanaian Times this morning says our target is single digit in, in interest rate. President assures private sector businesses. Forestry Commission bans hunting from tomorrow and WIAC withholds uh, 48,854, uh, 855, I beg your pardon, results of alleged malpractices by students during the 2019 washing. U.S. Speaker, Black Congressional Caucus, observed 400th anniversary of slavery at Cape Coast. The uh, year of return is on. And the Finder newspaper says, Wasi passes improved, but 178,819 still miss varsity grades of A1 <coughs> to C6. And the grading system has been made easy by the find out their front page. ADB's digital drive will benefit agribusiness. Dr. Kofi Mensa is telling us so. And Israel to assist Cocoa Board to deal with swollen shoot virus disease. Our dams are not guinea fowls that will fly to Burkina, according to Dr. Bowie, and deploy Navy and during close season fishermen. The Daily Guide is our final one for this morning. It says, of oh, for was thrown out again, ex maslock boss accomplice uh, escapes jail and SO from Paul wins fourth Vivo Energy Award. Our dams not guinea fowls, uh, Baumia to NDC and NDC chokes on take or pay agreements. That is a conversation that will take center stage today uh, and I've been joined this morning in studio by Madame Rodling Imorayana. She's a former vice chairman, a chairperson of the CPP. Madam, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Great. And uh, Dr. Samu uh, Kwejo in Kansa, Nuama, I beg your pardon, is the MP for Kwada. So he's also a member of the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament. Doc, welcome. Good morning. How are Thanks. you doing? I like your pocket square. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's been ages. And the Honorable Adam Mutawakilo is the uh, Messiah of Damongo constituency. He's also a ranking member of the <laughs> Mines <laughs> and Energy uh, Committee of Parliament. I'm not the uh, how are you the doing? Sir? One, thank you very well, much. Well, you're working. I'm so the servant of the You are the, the servant of, of the people. Yes. Yes. But if your works are, are saving the people, what, yes. what they are saying? No, well, that is how a servant is supposed <laughs> to be. So it doesn't promote you to be the Messiah. Great. Let, let's start <laughs> off from uh, the stables of WAIC. And we're told that some 74,000 of our students who sat for the WASI examinations failed their English language. Madam, how does this hit you as a mother, first of all? Good morning, Ghana, and to all our viewers out there. Um, Wayek, I think every time, every year, Wayek seems to come out with something. Mm. We always have news of either um, our children not doing well, or there's been a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it, impersonations, mm. cheating, whatever. Mm. And it's worrisome. But this morning, um, reading that, um, well, in one sector, mm -hmm. we've done well. We've, we're supposed to have improved right. uh, in mathematics mm -hmm. and other subjects. Mm -hmm. But we seem to have done badly in English. Right. Um, and as a parent, you will ask yourself, why do we um, do so badly in English? Mm -hmm. Because everything else in this country, that's our official language. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you need English language, you need mathematics to go to the university and other um, uh, institutions. Mm. So if we are doing so badly in English and seem to have improved in mathematics, mm. for me, I, I, I tend not to really understand. Because mathematics has always been the subject mm. that Ghanaians um, would say is a difficult subject. But English, no. But if I were to cast my mind back mm. to previous um, complaints that have come up, mm. it's always had to do with this new thing called technology, right. mobile phones. Okay. Um, the way our children, we leave our children to use the mobile phones. Mm. We are not using the mobile phones, or our kids are not using the mobile phones for um, learning, mm. per se. Mm. It's much more for amusement and for games and all that. Mm. And then they get to write these um, I don't know what you call it, shorthand or right. whatever it is. And that is that is really worrisome. Because even when you're talking to them, it was formerly Pigeon English, mm -hmm. okay? But mm -hmm. we fought against that. And suddenly Pigeon has gone, mm -hmm. and it's now another form of um, technological language, mm -hmm. which, which goes with social media language. Right. So you have all sorts of uh, 
terms coming up and they take it to the exam rooms and that for me is worrying mm -hmm. and to think that we are actually asking and encouraging our children mm -hmm. to even go to school with these um, uh, uh, phones mm -hmm. um, to the extent that people think that it's the right of the child to mm -hmm. go to the exam room if possible with a phone. GS bounded they were, they were fought by yeah, some parents. They were parents. fought by some parents mm -hmm. you, you understand and it seems like some of us parents do not seem to appreciate what this does to our children because children are beginning to be smart you know, they use these phones for all manner of things. Mm. And somehow, we sit back, we allow them to use them, and then when they don't get the requisite um, exam mm. results, then we, 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 we sort of like blame government, blame teachers. Mm. The teacher cannot do everything. Right. We as parents will also have to do our bit. Mm. This is the way I see it. But I think that in as much as we can complain, we should also put a bit of the blame on government. Mm. Because like I was telling you of, of A, the curriculum keeps changing. Mm -hmm. The inputs keeps changing, mm. and we are asking, is the teacher education also changing? changing? Mm. The, the, the way of teaching, mm. is it changing? Mm. Are they bringing in new techniques of teaching? Right. Are, they, uh, are they having new models, mm. for instance, about how to go up um, to let the children know how to actually um, do comprehension? In our time, we had grammar, we had comprehension. They don't even understand. The dictation was dictation, also there. Mental, you know, all those things. Composition was also They don't understand. You tell somebody, look, I just want you to go and read this, and the person, oh, I don't feel like reading. They don't, they'd rather play games. Mm. And we are watching our children playing games all the time. You know, we don't even give, they don't read anymore. Mm. We don't write letters anymore. That's where we used to learn, writing letters to your parents. Mm. I think that maybe we should bring back letter writing okay. to schools. Thank you. Doc? Take a bite uh, on this. Uh, uh, it it must be troubling for you, isn't it? It is, yes. Good morning once again uh, and to my um, colleagues here. And let me say good morning to my constituents mm -hmm. and uh, uh, my party folks. Good morning to everyone. Um, I, I, I lectured at Legon, University of Ghana. Um, I was at the School of Engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't that interesting. But when you look at the trend and you look at how far imp the input government has put into education. Uh, we know it's alarming, mm. but it's not so bad. Mm. Even if, if, I, if I heard you properly, you said uh, there's an improvement, there is however. An improvement, right. But I think we are stressing so much on the negatives. Mm. I have some data here. I will take it. 74,000 failed. I think when you, have, when you look at integrated science, mm. 2018, we have 50.52. 2019, 63.17. Mm. When you go to English language, 2018, 46.91%. Mm. 2019, 48.96%. Mm. So there has been an improvement, there has even been a in, in English language. Mm. Social studies, 2018, 73.27%. 2019, 75.43%. You look at mathematics, mm. 2018, 38.33%. Mm. 2019, 65.31%. So, 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 so you, could, you could pass, for example, with, uh, and get a C6 and may not be able to make the university. The goal is to transit from one point to the other. Of course, we are comparing results year on year mm -hmm. and see how far we've come. Okay. And then if you remember, in the midst of this double track and all those mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and we've managed to have a positive impact. Mm. This is not this one is then the double track. Please, I'm coming. coming. No, also, I, I, allow him, allow him okay, to make please. his point, please. So, in the midst of all this, you, are, you have your turn. Because initially there were complaints mm. that the double track will affect contact hours and all those things. So, mm. some of us were worried, thinking that it's going to have negative effect on the results outcome. Mm. But looking at the results, even though all of us are yearning for more as we are, we, we need to push the boundaries. But when you compare the results of the previous year and this year, we should commend the minister in charge of education. Are, are you not? Are you not disturbed that um, even though English is used to to express yourself for social studies, or I'm looking CRS, at I'm looking at the general. For economics, for I'm looking Greek, at the general for biology, results. for physics, for chemistry, of course. even for elective maths and core maths. You are not worried that the I'm base, the which, general, will, which will then spring into the others. I'm looking at the general, the general results mm. and then see the improvement, as you rightly said. And then we can zoom into the individual subjects. Mm. Of course, English, we need improvement there. And Madame rightly said so, that changes in the, our societal patterns mm. is having effects in our communication. Mm. And 
I keep on saying this. If you are not proficient in one language, mm. it's difficult to translate into a different language. Right. Because in Ghana, the youth, it's difficult for anyone mm. to speak even one local language properly. Mm. So even your own language, you can't express yourself well in that language. Which is L1. But how can you how can you translate that? Mm. Because there are some words in your local language that you don't even know the English word for it. And there are some English words that you know you can say it anytime. But if you are asked about the local version of it, mm. you don't even know. Mm. So if you, if, if you know this, people who can speak English very well or, or any particular language very well, mm. they can go to Turkey and then quickly we use a year to study the Turkish language right. and pursue a whole degree mm. in the language, in Turkish language. Or they can go to France because they can, they can express themselves well in one particular language. Mm. So just translating that from one level to the other, it's not what if you got. But in our case, mm. we are not proficient in any language. We keep on jumping from one to the other. Why? Because we, we are chasing the shadows. You understand? There has been several arguments that we should have a language. I think I was reading somewhere that the minister was even proposing mm. that we add French to our curriculum. I think it's a good thing. I think something we should look at. Because English as it is, is very dynamic. It keeps changing. There are some words that have been used wrongly mm. several times and they're accepted to be right. Mm. I, I, I was asking someone, do you understand the meaning of severally? Mm. And he was oh, several times, so many. But it's not the case. But no, that's not it. That's not it. Mm. And this is the word that we keep on saying, or oh, you can't eat your cake and have it. Mm. No, it's wrong. Is you can have your cake and eat it. Mm. But because we've said it several times, mm. we, we all accept it. But in, in, in French, mm. you can't do that. That's static. Mm. So most of the English words that we use actually was brought from the French language. Absolutely. So we need to know where we are trying to go. But if I have, if I have to assess the results in general, I would, I would say yes, well done to the minister. Then, then a question, However, then a question we, comes to me, uh, Honorable, that, uh, for example, at the end of every exam, the chief examiner would, would put recommendations down. Do you know if these recommendations are injected into the curriculum? Madam talks about the, the times are changing, the curriculum is changing, the system is changing. There's change along the line everywhere. Do you know if this, these uh, recommendations made by the chief examiners over the years are injected into how things are taught in the classroom I, I, I and how internal assessment is conducted? In the I think that is what has fed into the, the change in the curriculum that the minister is proposing. You understand? Because and uh, we have to subject teachers to mm. rigorous testing mm. to understand or to know at any point in time teachers that we present to the students mm. are to the standard that we expect of them. But now it's not the case. When you go to the UK, teachers have to take exams every year or so mm. to have the minimum qualification to be there. Mm. You can't just use the qualification from the university alone mm. to, to teach all the time. You need to always keep upgrading yourself. Mm. So it's important we look at that structure okay. and how we can better it going Great. forward. Thank you very much. Honorable Adam Mutao Kilo. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. What's uh, your bite on this? Yeah, my sister had just said quite a number of the issues I would have raised. Mm. Uh, first is L1. Very important that we emphasize on L1. Your mother tongue, language, you mean. At the early stages mm. of our life. But you realize that as we grow, technology has taken over us mm. where uh, we find a short way of saying many things mm. and uh, expressions that by if you put it in an exam form you will fail but by text message is under it's, it's normal mm. two is the methodology how but, but, do but, our but, oh, before you move on for example if you go to the US or UK whichever it is where these technologies were imported from they still would write these shorthand, but they don't put it that, in their exam. That is what I'm saying. Why, the methodology. Why, why have we taken it? And the we're, methodology. We're, we're, we're dumping it on our examiners. You get, yeah, that is what I'm list, um, putting up. Right. The methodology. methodology okay. And the, 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 the quality of teaching also counts. If you teach a, an English teacher mm. and you don't use the right methods, mm. you won't get the right outcomes. The pedagogical approach. Yes. It's very, very important. Three is the frequent changes of curriculum. Mm. As we speak now, uh, teachers are going back for training for changing curriculum mm. at the uh, GSS primary level. Mm. Mm. 
frequent changes has a grave impact on the outcome. Mm -hmm. When the pro retroactive and proactive interference mm -hmm. can cause a lot of damage to students. As to this year's 74,000 is not a small number. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with double track. Double track is for the first years. Mm -hmm. These are continuous to them from the old system right. that we must correct. So the double track has no effect on the student. So we should wait, come 2020, there are, but that's where we'll assess the double track system vis-a-vis -vis the results that will uh, come out. Mm -hmm. I believe that English language is critical mm -hmm. because it's one of the basic requirements. If you take the basic requirement, it's mathematics, the course of the mathematics, English language, mm. and either integrated science mm. or social studies. Right. So if you have a good car mm. with three brand new tires and an old tire that is flat, mm. the, tire, the car cannot still move. That we must understand. Without English, mm. it will be difficult to move to, to the next stage of your educational mm. career. And therefore, emphasis must be based and there must be investigation to find out mm -hmm. why 74,000 students will fail mm -hmm. in English language. That is what we should be talking about. Who should and, be and that is what this, we, we, this investigation? That is, that is why we need the Minister of Education, mm -hmm. the GES, coming out to explain to us what they will do said that this will not repeat. I, I, I asked a question this morning. I said, look, we have given WAIC a certain arrangement to conduct exams on our behalf for our students. Do we go back to vet the agreement we gave to WAEC because they are working for us? Do we go back to say, look, I think you're being too hard on the students. I think you're being too soft. I think you're, you're not applying the curriculum we used to, to train the kids because WAEC doesn't conduct exams only in Ghana. It's in other West African countries. Is it the way to go to ask WAEC to come back to the table? There must be a standard method of examination mm. and not to hear to uh, what do you want me to set. I think that why always come out with the, sil uh, the topics we used to get them, mm. the syllables. So they know very well what is taught at the various schools. Right. But they don't care mm. whether you've been able to cover the topics or, or not. Right. That is the work of the, 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 the teacher. Right. That is the work of GS. That is the work of Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. So for me, that standard practice must be. We do need to compromise it, the standards. Is it a question of contact hours because the GES has abolished extra classes, for example, and we know the place that extra classes has in terms of trying to cover and finish the, or complete the curriculum or the syllabus. I believe that extra classes, even though helps, but given the time duration and the absorption limits of uh, students, if properly implemented, students can still pass and okay. pass away. Thank you. What up, you wanted no, to raise? No, I wanted to just say that at the end of the day, when we look at the education, um, I'll, I would have wished that they could tell us percentages of public schools as against international schools. Right. Because if you're going to look at maybe those who failed, mm. most likely most of them came from our public schools. Right. And you and I know the problems that these public schools have. Mm. They don't have the facilities, and some of them are in overseas areas. Mm. They don't even get the school hours. And they write the same exams right. as schools, like the international schools, whose basic reason for being there mm. is to train children to get to the next level. Once they get there, that's it. And they come out with the, the, the best result. The quality mm. that we get from the public schools is such that you cannot but say that majority of this 74% mm. will be coming from public schools because of lack of facilities. Mm. And th the curriculum is such that before, parents could teach their children. Mm. But now, we, we hardly know how to teach the children. Because the type of subjects that they're doing and the way the <laughs> methodology <laughs> is, they come home and we, we hardly get to teach them. Right. So I would say that um, uh, governments will have to wake up okay. and start looking at the public schools again. I mm. even made a suggestion that I felt that the people who deserved the free <coughs> SHS mm. should have been yeah. people who were coming from the public schools. Okay. Let me just talk about it. These students are not covered by the free SHS. 
Oh, they, are they are not covered. They are not, yes. No. That, they are that, not they, okay, so the first they, and second cohorts are in now. They yes. are in Form 1 and Form 2. Yes. The, if if the, new, the new uh term comes, yeah, we'll have the third right. cohort. Yes. So so these Form 3s the who wrote the exam, they, 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 they were not covered. They by the the irony is that yeah. those who are in public schools in the second cycle institutions do very well. We got people prefer public schools when it comes to second cycle, mm. secondary schools. Mm. But ironically, when you go to the primary schools and the junior high, junior high schools, the junior mm. high. they're not doing well. Not mm. So I was having a conversation with the Minister of Education, the deputy, and he was telling me that what are they, it's not because government is not doing what it's supposed to do, mm. but what are we doing right here? Okay. And not and doing wrong there, mm. so they want to. Is a is a program is going it, on? Now? Is it the interest of the alumni, for example? Because if you go if you go into a good school, the alumni, the old boys or old girls, will have an interest in it. They will be checking which of their mates are, are teachers. They will be breathing down the necks of, of the headmasters and head teachers to ensure that you that, know this is that's all part of it. But mm. I think that we are doing something right at the other secondary schools. Mm. We need to. Translate the same thing okay. down there, right. so that they all can all benefit from it. Okay, uh, you can join us with your thoughts and comments. I, I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm sure you have something to share. Zero two zero two one six 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 three three. Let's now move on. Yesterday, uh, just by the time we were going to bed, we heard that uh, the PDS arrangement had been uh, cancelled or put on hold, whichever it is that uh, you want to describe it. And um, we're told that it is because they were not playing by the rules of the game, as was agreed uh, between them and government. They were supposed to have uh, injected some amount of money. As it stands, they have not injected that amount of money. And this was further alleged uh, earlier in July by the former Deputy Minister for Power, Mr. Jenapo, who alleged that uh, PDS is not doing what they have been asked to do. And as a result, we have um, accrued some $300 million more debt to add on to the earlier 400, making a total of 700 million. PDS was supposed to have injected some $900 million, but thus far they have not done. Government says that it is uh, because of a due diligence that they did, which has now brought this to the fore, and that they will go back to the reinsurer in Qatar to go and run it because somebody who didn't have the wherewithal, who didn't have the capacity and authority, signed a certain document. The question is, was due diligence properly done and could we have saved ourselves this mess? Uh, are we getting into judgment debt? Or uh, what is the overall impact that will come to you as a consumer at home? We'll start with you, Doc. Doc, how long ago uh, did we realize this anomaly which has suddenly culminated into a cancellation and asking ECG to do what they were doing. Uh, let me first of all give some brief background of how we got here. Now this all started from this power compact agreement between the United States and Ghana mm. which was done by the MCC, Millennium Challenge Corporation. Mm. And they have they had six projects. Mm. And one of them says that ECG, uh, there should be the financial and operation turnaround in there, mm. which calls for the privatization of ECG. Okay. So when the new government came in, mm -hmm. this arrangement has already been done. This agreement has already been signed. Okay. But we thought that, no, per the agreement that was signed, 20% was for the local content. Right. And 80 was supposed to be for uh, the private partner. So we thought that wasn't fair. And they, it has to be for 25 years. So the, the, the minister then had a, a, a meeting mm. with, with, with the, the MCC. He said, listen, we can, we can review this. Mm. So the, the review was done. And then the number of years was reduced to 20 years. Mm. And then the local content uh, part in it was an increase 51%, giving the, 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 the Ghanaian mm. the majority share in, in, the, in the private arrangement that was supposed to be done. So it, all, it was all geared towards making the, the ECG profitable, mm. making our powered or lights on all the time, industries powered mm. and manufacturing going on. That was the idea. Mm. Because anything that happens in the country, we talk about ECG, and we thought we have to infuse some energy into it. Mm. So the idea was well supported at the time. And gradually, we all got here. Issues was raised initially about the the, the, the other company that expressed interest. Mm. I think when we came to power, we had about three or three, three of them mm. still still there, 
trying to find out which, which one we should select, mm -hmm. then BDS, EDF, and then Miracle. Mm -hmm. Along the line, EDF dropped off, and then BSC was also disqualified yes. by the MCC. Mm -hmm. So we had no choice, but we were left it, Miracle. When you say we had no choice, what exactly do you mean? Because we are left it. We had three. Okay. The one dropped off, and then MCC, the other one, which is the... Uh, the so even BSC. if they were not qualified, we had no choice, so we had to go for them? So this one has to be properly assessed. Okay. And that is how far we've come here. Was, how was that proper assessment done? Yes. According to international best practice? Of course. There are condition precedents. So that has to be met. And there are conditions subsequent that has also to be met. So gradually, they've met certain conditions that was enough for us to enter into that agreement. Mm -hmm. And we did that. And we did that. Mm -hmm. But in the subsequent one that they need to meet, gradually we realized that no, something is not going as mm -hmm. it's supposed to be. So we have suspended it. Okay. I think this is a critical issue. Mm -hmm. And we should commend the government for taking this step. The, the finance minister was in parliament declared a state of emergency in the energy sector. Could this be why he, he made that statement in uh, parliament? Let me finish my point. This We should commend the government for taking this bold step. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking a question. I'm not asking for commentation. I'm asking, was this why or could this be why the finance minister, when he did the budget review, announced to all of us that as a state of emergency? It's never I, happened before. No, by I'm the going way. to relate this to that. And tell you get me, my point. Tell me. I want us to understand that this government has done a good job for making sure the, the sector is well protected, our asset is well protected, and ensuring that whoever comes to Ghana to do business with us mm. cannot take us for granted. And if this has been done in the past mm. by previous government, my brother, we wouldn't have been here. The minister wouldn't have been in parliament to announce state of emergency, as you are saying. Mm. But even with that, we are assured by the minister that Doomso is over and Doomso won't be returned. Mm. But the point is, if we'd had the will and the zeal to stop some of these things, we wouldn't have entered into arrangement whereby even if we don't need it, mm. we're still going to buy, buy them. This is what we led us into what the pay or take arrangement that we entered into. Mm. Let me give you a scenario. <coughs> As if you, have a, you have a fleet of cars, you are into a car business, mm. like you operate a car terminal, and then you have a lot of passengers who want to uh, patronize your, your cars. Mm. They come, the cars are not moving. Mm. So they're complaining. Where are the cars? They're not moving, please. And then instead of you doing what you need to do to the cars to move, so no, no, I'll, I'll sort it out. Wait for me. And then you bring in more cars, and the cars are there. And then they're still complaining. Where are the cars? We want to travel. And then you bring in more cars. So when we ask you, please, what are you doing to move the cars? So listen, I'm doing, I'm working. I'm bringing more cars. You know, the cars are not moving. You get my point? And then even when you go to buy the cars, the car dealer will tell you, listen, why are you buying these cars? I think you have enough. And then you go and make a case to the car dealer. Listen, don't worry, we still need more cars. Mm. And the car dealer will tell you, listen, there's no demand for it because what you have is enough. And you make a case, listen, I'm telling you we need the cars. Even if they don't patronize it, I'll make sure I'll pay you a minimum value that you don't have to lose any, any, any investment. Mm. That is what led us into pay or take mm. arrangement. Take, take or pay arrangement. Take or pay arrangement. Mm. Because they are telling you that, listen, there's no demand, you have enough. Mm. And clearly when you look at the figures, it tells you there's no need for buying mm. these machines. So, so how, how long ago did we identify this anomaly which has uh, culminated into the suspension? <laughs> we have, we have raised issues in the past. I think when we were doing the handover, the minister I mean, we told them, mm. oh, listen, if you fail to live after expectation, if you fail to convert this into a profitable venture, mm. we would abrogate this contract. And the deal, was, the deal was for them to bring, what, 900 million? It was, well, did, was, did you see the 900 million before no, you no, no, I'm, I'm put pen to paper? That was well put out there. I mentioned about, con uh, about uh, uh, condition precedence, precedence and, con uh, and subsequent. Right. So it's, it's not a done deal. We're not done yet. They need to fulfill certain the, conditions the as, Let, as we go help, along. Help us understand. Yes, the, the conditions precedent said that they were going to inject a certain capital to improve the quality of service and to make ECG more profitable. Did you see the indications which convinced you well enough to say, put pen to paper? Whatever let's, they needed to meet.
whatever the condition they need to meet at the time mm. for us to say, yes, we can go ahead and do business with you, they met that condition. So, That's why we entered that agreement. So how come and Mr. Jinapo now is a, a, alleging, and he did that earlier in July, that, look, they didn't bring any money. They will wait for people no. to buy their ECG credit. No. And no. then they will collect their money no, I'm and then reinvest the it. Issue that is was that raised, true, by the way? Everyone has raised issues with this arrangement. Is that true? I'm, what was this? Is Jinapo it's not true. It's not true. Okay. It's not true. Everyone has raised issues with this arrangement. The reason why it has been suspended, not because of the issues they raised, the, is, the reason why it is suspended is clearly stated. Okay. That because we need some guaranteeing instrument. It hasn't been met. Okay. It's not because, because I've, I've read somewhere that oh, there was no uh, uh, monitoring schedule between the ECG and, and, and PDS. There's no this. But that's not the, the reason why this has been suspended. Why, why was there no monitoring schedule? It was supposed to be met afterwards. No, no the monitoring schedule, no, that's what somebody raised. I'm saying that. Mm. We are here because they needed to meet that guaranteeing instrument to protect our assets and the risk attached to you, it. You know that the IPPs, nine of them, had raised concerns and they had threatened actually to shut down our power because PDS hadn't brought the money they said they were going to bring not so long ago. And, and that, that, that's not good as well. See, that is one, that's why we are here, mm -hmm. because it needs to be protected. It has to be put, we have to have insurance to cover the risk associated with it. Okay. So if it is not well covered, because if they're not supposed to, they're supposed to uh, give some amount of money and it's not there, insurance will cover. Hmm. But the insurance itself has found out to be invalid. So then we cannot continue doing business. Where do we go from here? Do we, do we get ourselves into a murky situation, uh, judgment debt? Is it staring at us? Where do we the, go from the, here? The good thing, the good thing is that you've been assured, and I can also stay on your, be here in your studio and say that Doomso is not coming back. That's the good thing. Okay. We should be assured of that because all these things. <laughs> judgment. Was, there, I, I'm my question about judgment. There. All these things. We, we've been told that we are gen coming. we're generating plenty not already. Well, so well, well, well. Doomso. <laughs> It's not coming back, and that's a fact. Is because judgment debt coming to us? How does it come back? Come to us? Because we're no. You have to meet your condition. You have to meet my condition. Okay. If you if you we we, we need on yours, then you have to pay you because you have you, you need on your on your promises. Okay. Thank you. So I think that the, we need to commend the government for this bold step. It's not easy. It's happened before. They couldn't do it. It has been done this time, just to protect you and I to make sure we get powers in our homes and industries. What, when will this forward. state of the uh, emergency in the energy sector end? Because no, there's no state, industry there's no and state, service... There's no state of emergency in the energy sector. The, the, they were saying that the, if, the we, if we don't do A, B, C, D, mm. we're going to enter the state of emergency. And this is one of them. Huh. So we need... That's why we've, we've suspended it. Okay. Because if it hasn't been suspended, you wouldn't have known. And if we are not going to... If we don't talk about the take or pay agreement, you wouldn't have known. Okay. So there are several things that have been laid down mm. that we need to do to prevent Ghana from entering into this situation that you talked about. Okay. Uh, Arobo Adam Mutawakilo, this is too much, uh, too much information that perhaps scares the consumer at the end. Yeah. And they are thinking, okay, if I take my card and go and buy my credit, what does it mean? And what does this suspension of this mean to me and to my mother Ghana? What, what do you say? You are the ranking yeah, member uh, uh, of the committee in yes, parliament. Yes. Uh, are, you, are you aware of this? Yeah, what ha uh, let me, me put it here that when the compact was signed uh, under NDC, we exited by his grace. Mm. A new government came in and then had to continue. Made amendment to the earlier agreement, mm. increasing the local participation to 51 right and then the the p duration 20 years they brought to parliament two agreements mm. lease and assignment agreement okay and the bulk supply agreements mm. these agreements are what we call condition precedents okay when we say condition precedent before there are certain conditions that the concessionaire must meet okay before taking over the assets okay. of ecg and one of the critical, and there were about 45. Okay. And one of the critical was provision of guarantee or security mm. approved in parliament. Now it goes to the executive. The executive decided to make some of the condition precedents conditions subsequent. 
But this was brought back to you in Parliament. No. It wasn't. It wasn't. The minority race issues, mm. and as you equally said, Honorable Jinapur race issues about that. Uh, e e IES, mm. race issues about this guarantee. This government didn't have any knowledge, any serious government mm. that is transferring huge assets mm. of ECG will first of all do the due diligence to make sure that the guarantee provided by the concessionaire is genuine. We're, we're being told that the due diligence is what has brought this. That should have been done before handing over. Of course. You don't hand over the of assets mm. to the company mm. to money from March mm. to July. Then you turn around and tell me we've done due to that should have been done before. So due this should have been at the president. Was president. Okay. And we told them that the guarantee that they provided, and I said it that it is paper guarantee not backed by liquidity mm. or cash. Mm. Government did not listen. I believe that the reason for abrogating it goes beyond the security. What do you see? Yes. We're, we're going back to I'm, Qatar I'm, to see the reinsurer. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> what do you see? So, so you realize that government knew that this insurance was not right because several civil society organizations had raised it earlier months ago, mm. even before the takeover, that the, the security or insurance had not been provided. Mm. And when the paper one was provided without liquidity back, we raised it. Now, first, do the government or the executive or the mm. president has no mm. right to vary what parliament has approved without recall to parliament. Mm -hmm. 45 condition precedents, you fulfill, you turn 16 of them conditions subsequent. That is wrong. And why didn't Parliament ask we had questions? You, issues you are that. doing the checks no. and balances. Two. Beyond raising issues, and he's a ranking member on the MSN Beyond Party. raising issues, we didn't hear your voice loud enough. We had. And that is why you said Gina Paul raised the issues. No, we raised no. it on the floor of Parliament as well. Mm. But majority will always have the So why way. didn't we call the minister Ma for the sector? I cannot call Mr. J.P. Amewu to appear before parliament to answer questions that, look, you came to us with a certain number of conditions that must be satisfied, prerequisites, before this agreement is entered. You've taken it to cabinet and you're doing otherwise. Come and tell us why you're doing that. You, are, you hold power for the people in parliament. Why didn't you we do that? We always, as minority will always raise issues on the floor of parliament, outside parliament, civil society will raise issues. The executive has the right to listen to us and take action. Was the minister invited to answer questions no. on this? Why not? Why, we, not? Why didn't we call the minister, say, you came to us and you told us you're going to give us wache, gari, and egg. Now you are serving people wache, macaroni, and pepper. <laughs> Why? You because see, then the nutritional component Will be, will be reduced. You see, in politics or in parliament, mm. there are several processes that goes on. It's not necessary all the time call. You raise it on the floor of parliament, mm. the speaker can direct. Okay. Do you get my point? Sometimes you can file a question and it will take seven months mm. before response. So if we had filed a question and it is delayed, then it's, it's not the best way. I see. It's our responsibility to raise it on the floor mm. of parliament. Civil society raise it. It must be taken on by the majority. Wh where do we now, go from here? Now, what what, what now, consequence will be for come. us? Mm. Let me come. Now, why I said there is something beyond that this just because mm. of insurance? Because the government knew. And per what a minority had raised and civil society had raised, mm. the government knew three months ago that making the provision of the insurance of conditions subsequent was not the best mm. and that it was not properly done. Why should they wait until now? That should have been done before handing over. Now, we believe that there is the local partner. Mm. We are all aware that there, were, there are issues mm. in respect to the capacity okay. of the local partners mm. to honor their obligations or part of the contract. Mm -hmm. It is clear. Mm. There were issues of alleged fronting. Mm -hmm. By who? No, that's what I'm saying. That's mm -hmm. alleged fronting. Mm. 
whereby the beneficial owners are seated somewhere mm -hmm. where they push some people to take lead. We also have alleged disagreement mm -hmm. between these local partners which are fronting and the beneficial owners. And with time, as mm -hmm. days go by, we'll get to the truth. Government says it had a meeting with Carl Bank, EECG, PDS, Danwell Insurance, Minister of Finance, Minister of Energy, MEDA, MCC, Hunton, uh, Andrews, all the partners and the legal advisors before they took this decision. But why should it be before, uh, uh, after? This should have been done before. You don't hand over my asset. If within this uh, few months they had misused all the assets mm. that ECG required, can you retrieve that? And there's, that is what due diligence should have been done. There's a 300 million now, debt we're, we're being told now, about. In terms of the debt, mm. Minister of Finance sort of played the role, I, I'll talk about this one. Quick, quickly. Played so the role of PURC. Mm. And I have to tackle the, the take of the stuff. Mm. The role of one time, Minister of Finance invited PURC okay. and PDS for a discussion on tariff. Mm. And I was happy. PURC made the Minister of Finance to understand okay. that they are independent. Mm. So it seems the Minister of Finance is protecting. The Minister of Finance asked PDA, you receive the money, settle your liabilities first before you honor obligations. And that resulted into the $300 million debt. That, that wasn't this, a good decision, was it? That wasn't a good decision. <laughs> Two, PDS will start investing in a year's time. But that was not the agreement. They're supposed to bring the that, money, 900 million. They are supposed. And that is where we said that this government knew. And we believe that is beyond what they are telling us. And in due course, it will come out. What else Take do you see? What else do you see, finally? What, yeah. else, what no. do you see, uh, what the consequence? Where are we Sorry. going? Please make, note your point, sir. One, consequence, one where are we customers going? are confused. I know that. ECG had various accounts in which lodgements are made. Mm. PDS made it single. As we speak today, the workers of ECG are more confused than ever. Really? Those receiving the revenue, where do I lodge this money into? It's another. As we, for we the customers, we are not setting the future of our distribution and the entire energy sector. Government says there will be no doom so. Now, that is where I'm now coming. Government says no doom so. They say, oh, you have brought more gas mm. for us. That we, we are not able to consume oil. You have brought more power for us. Mm. Then you have brought Esla, which is, the, which, is, which is the money to liquidate, mm. uh, to solidify and make the sector. And then they say, oh, we solve doom so. You say, Mama has brought too much gas to power the plant. You are not using it. Mama has brought too much machines. Mm. So we have more. Mama, President Mama has brought a, a Esla, which is a revenue to liquefy the system. Mm -hmm. Then you come out, I ended them. So is that not a joke? Now, let's go to pay. R wrap yesterday. Up, wrap up for me. Yesterday. You have spoken enough. Yesterday, mm -hmm. one of the visions of the President Mama that has been neglected by this government came to bear. President Mama in December 2012 realized that with the challenges we are facing, Ghana will be a power hub mm -hmm. to export power. Mm. In that document, to Burkina Faso, okay. Mali, and Niger. And as a result, AFD provided a facility of $175 million mm. to upgrade the transmission line mm. from Kumasi to Bolga mm. from 161 kV to 330 kV. 2017. Mm. This government could not continue because Gridco was non-performing. And the, the agreement was based on the liquidity ratio of Gridco. And as a result, last year, uh, April, the contract was suspended. And now, government came to us with a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Because Gridco cannot more pay because the financials are bad. Mm -hmm. It is today, since April last year, government then came with a guarantee to, to support it, the project to continue. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you. Yesterday, we you, you, you asked the CEO. You have told me enough. We, have, we, we asked the CEO. No, no, I'm have, just you have, coming. You have told me enough. No, uh, let me conclude. No, no, we asked the CEO. You have told me enough. We asked the CEO of uh, Greco. Can you, I you have to, no, you what reverse. consumption no, no, you do you expect this export of power to have brought? He said, one, 
by upgrading it, if it was done, mm -hmm. they would have been exporting 200 megawatts. And Burkina Faso, there are two mining companies that have been put up. They will need 400 megawatts. Is that a serious government? Okay. Any serious government knowing that we will have access to export, mm. we we'll undertake this project immediately. Okay. Rural electrification. The, you the, have the, almost the, the abandoned argument, rural The argument from the side of government is that our power is pretty much expensive, and so it will be difficult. It's to not sell. supported by uh, doc, uh, I, uh, Is it? Yes. Is our power really expensive? No. Uh, okay, the minister it? of former minister for no no doc you have a take madam has not had a bite so <laughs> former she minister to for power no. energy no no i, I, I give you enough time i give you enough time I'm so about it in the okay. document thank provided you. to thank us you. thank you very much madam, madam <laughs> it does appear our power has been toyed with uh what do you what do you think what do you what do you think um, no. these are the details that are coming ECG. to us mm. ecg is it's a big problem why so I don't know, but I still believe that we are very capable as Ghanaians, mm. you know, to take care of ECG. But somehow, um, government upon government, apart from our government, the CPP government of the mm. uh, Sergeant Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, has always felt that we always needed to bring some other people to come and run this particular CPP. company for what, us. Was it because you didn't have options like they did? What, what kind of options? The whole thing was that it depends on the, the kinds of people, the caliber of people mm. that you put there. Okay. And transparency is key to all these dealings that so, we so are So you're having. talking about the structure, the, you're talking about the quality yes, of people I'm, in I'm, there. I'm talking about the structure, I'm talking about the quality of people, I'm talking about the vision that mm. the, 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 the governments have mm. for this particular industry. Mm. So if, if you sit back and then you say that you have to privatize ECG, look, we've privatized everything else. Okay, we're saying 20% for Ghanaians, 80% for private sector. We didn't do due diligence to the whole issue, and therefore we are back to square one. Kame says it's the due diligence that has brought no, this up. No, so no, 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 it should so have been done. It should, due diligence should have been done before getting that, to the sector. There are two sets, one then before, were, one after. Okay, no. one after, when the harm has already been done. Is someone going to pay for that? Mm. That's the, the first question I want answered. We are talking about judgment debt. Judgment debt means we are going to pay. In this particular instance, that person has not done his bit. Mm. So is that company going to pay us for breach of contract? Mm. Because you were supposed to bring in money. Right. You didn't bring it. Mm. And therefore, you brought us to this level. So we must be asking those kinds of questions. And then I'm asking, you abrogate contracts. This is not the only contract that has been suspended. Or suspend. You suspend it. You suspend, right. uh, suspend. Uh, you suspend uh, uh, road construction for auditing. You mm. suspend building of uh, uh, housing for auditing. And we are back to square one. At the end of the day, you realize that you need those houses. Mm. You need those roads. So you bring people back. I'm only saying that transparency is what is lacking mm. in the various dealings of previous governments and this government. Okay. Every time that we have to do something, it's shrouded in some form of secrecy. So allegations come out that people were fronting. Mm. You know, people were fronting. People didn't have the capacity to even uh, uh, go out and look for this particular uh, uh, project. And mm. yet they went. You know, there were so many names coming up. No, mm -hmm. let, let's face it. There were names coming up, okay. like fronting for 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 for. What people. names did you did you hear? Oh well, I, I, I okay. I go on. Allegations? No names. Really. Oh yeah, but there were um, allegations. I said of uh, uh, um, there's this guy that. X Men or something, a barbering shop barbering owner, shop. a barbering, barbering shop, shop owner barbering fronting shop. for someone. Um. Um, Gabby Ochudaku's name was mentioned, <laughs> and all sorts of things. I mean, these are things that's what I'm saying. Transparency, mm. open up, let Ghanaians know exactly Mr. what you're dealing with, right? Yeah, you, you know, open up, be transparent, and you see, let's let's stop doing this kind of it is only us that have the expertise. Mm. Other Ghanaians have the expertise. The fact that they are not MPP doesn't mean that they can't do it. The fact that they are not NDC doesn't mean they can't do it. Open up, open the whole thing up for all Ghanaians to take part. Okay. And then we won't be getting to where we are. Today, as, as we said, we expect the electricity company of Ghana to supply us with electricity. Okay. We were having prompts. As, as consumers, we were having prompts, at least to tell you how much you've consumed, because you are prepaying. So how can I prepay and not get electricity? Right. At the end of the day, nobody's even prompting me and, anymore. And they hold your money. And you hold my money. And, and I don't have anywhere to complain. I don't have any way, just, any way of getting my money back. It's not fair. I, okay. I, I thought for once, Madam would join me to commend the government. <laughs> <laughs> I should I remind, I remind, I'm I'm I should I'm remind ourselves I'm how not, far I'm very our unhappy this power. morning. Okay. We should remind ourselves how far. I'm happy when you asked him, why didn't Parliament call the minister mm. about the conditions? I said initially, that the condition president was met. 
okay. he can't no. say sit here and say it wasn't met. It was met. And then, but but the due diligence was still ongoing, and no problem. No. There's no problem at the moment. Because mm. that's what Madam was saying. We should have done this and then before this. No. Okay. So we, we should we commend go. the yes. government mm. for taking this bold step okay. to suspend the agreement. That's what okay. we should do. Okay. Because okay. now government is asking so for commendation. Madam says she's going to be. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. And I'm surprised. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. We are not happy. Government says commend us for suspending the contract. So what do you think? Let's read about it later. Madam Rodley. Uh, Imo Rayana is a former vice chairperson of the CPP. She's joined us here. Dr. Samuel Kwejo Nyama is a member of the MPP's communication team. He's also the MP for Kwadaso and a member of the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament. And uh, Honorable Adam Mutawakilo is a ranking member of the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament. He is the MP for Damongo. Thank you. The debate continues. You can see. Um, well, let it continue wherever you are.